Hello guys, and welcome to F1 2021, where we are taking a step away from Aiden Jackson's career mode, as we've had nothing but problems trying to get things reported. And I've decided that because we missed the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, we are actually going to start a new My Team career, thinking that there's a new team in Formula One, they're looking for a new driver, Sebastian Vettel and Lance Stroll end up going back to Aston Martin, the team that we used in our Breaking Point series. And now, Aiden Jackson is looking for a team. So we are going to give him that team. We are going to give him that seat here inside F1 2021. We're going to change the realistic settings here. We're going to go up to 95. That's where I think the car should be. I believe all the rest of the settings are set to normal. We are going to throw the faults on. See if we can potentially get ourselves some issues. Let's see what happens. We're not going to use the icons quite yet. Maybe in another season or two. First things first. Let's create your driver. Great, that's everything we need. You can go back and edit anything we've done so far, and we'll come back here at the start of each season. But if you're ready to go, hit advance to head to Team HQ, and we can start our push to the top of Formula One. So there we have it. Porsche Tag Heuer F1 racing team coming into the 2021 season. Our teammate Robert Schwartzman in our car, ready to go with a Ferrari power unit in the back of it. Let's head to Team HQ and do our interview with Will Buxton. Hello folks and welcome to this, a very special edition of Paddock Pass. As you can see, there's no pit lane behind me and as you can hear, no roar of engines and that's because they've set me free from the F1 paddock to escape here to the countryside and to the headquarters of Formula One's newest team. Now it's not every day we get to pull back the curtain and look behind the scenes at an F1 team, rarer still that we get to talk not only to the team owner, but also the team's lead driver. But what makes this place extra special is that the owner and lead driver are one and the same person. Now, it's been an interesting 12 months, and we all know a number of the regulation changes which were due to come into effect this year have been delayed until next. Some, though, are still seeing the light of day, amongst them the all-important budget cap, which gives some of the smaller teams, a little further down the order, potentially, the opportunity to compete with the bigger teams. Good for them, but great for us as viewers. But what does our new team owner think about these new rules? Do they see them as a challenge, a hurdle that needs to be overcome? Perhaps they see them as an opportunity to disrupt the status quo, a chance to come out swinging and to carve their name into Formula One history. Well, I had the opportunity to ask them these very questions just earlier today. And here's what they had to say. Well, first of all, thanks so much for inviting us here today. It's been wonderful to see behind the scenes. Uh, as you might expect, I've got about a million questions, so let's jump straight in. It's been a long time since we last saw a team owner take their own car onto the track, and the sport's changed enormously in the intervening years. How are you going to handle the responsibilities of both managing and driving for a Formula One team? Let's talk about your teammate. Now, it's clear they're excited to have signed with you, but tell me, what is it that you think they bring to the team? So you've obviously been putting a lot of work into the car. I know it's early days, but how do you expect it to feel out there?
most of the other teams can boast years of experience in Formula One. Where do you see the opportunities to make those vital performance gains you need to put you within reach of the other cars? Ultimately, your success this season is going to come down to whether you can take positions from the other drivers. What is it about your car that's going to give you that edge in those battles? And finally, with so many specialist departments working together here at your headquarters, and with such an important deadline coming up, who's getting that coveted teacher's gold star? Which group do you feel the most proud of right now? Well, thank you so much for your time. It's uh, been wonderful to get an insight from you and, of course, to see around the headquarters. Thank you for today. Really appreciate it. And thank you all at home for watching as well. We'll see you very soon. So we've gone with the chassis and the aero to try and help our R&D section out. Powertrain's looking not too bad already. The answers definitely helped us get a few things for the arrow and the chassis. Inside of our facilities, because we selected that last question to help the aerodynamics, we automatically get bumped up to spec one. We don't have a lot of money. I think we are actually going to take the quality control here on the chassis. As it drops us down to only having $100,000 to spend. But we, I would really like to try and guarantee that any of the parts that we do do on the chassis side do end up coming through. As we head into the R&D stage, we're going to try and get a few upgrades done, maybe one and one for each. Anything that can give us a reduction, drag. That one gives us downforce. That one gives us more downforce. Everything here is downforce, it seems, so I think we'll just go with something standard. I don't think we're going to have enough money to do anything on the chassis side. We do have a few team activities though. Try and give your teammate a little bit of a boost here. Definitely get some more acclaim if we can find some. Team acclaim is gonna be huge so we can start earning more R&D points quickly and we can start earning more sponsors for more money as it all snowballs together. And there it is, the Porsche Tag Heuer car for the 2021 season. Let's jump straight into qualifying for Bahrain, see what we can come up with for the first race of Aiden Jackson's full career in F1 Okay, we've had the new parts come through the fabrication process. We'll have them with us for the next... So here we go, qualifying for round one at Bahrain. We'll go over the car setup quickly. If anybody's like to know how we run the car here, how we're going to be running the car, it might be a little bit draggy, but giving us a little bit of help out of the corners, I think is definitely going to help. Moving forward. That's how it looks. That's how we look. Let's head for our first few laps. Not a terrible opening lap for us as we come through the last few corners and head on the last straight. Car's feeling okay. 
definitely doesn't feel like it has as much power as the Mercedes or the Ferrari. It? Still feeling not too bad nonetheless. We come across the line for our first flying lap of the 128. There's only one lap of fuel remaining. come back we currently sit in sixth place miles miles below Sergio Perez on a 126.4 we definitely have a lot of time to find in this car nice to see that Schwartzman isn't too far off of our pace though I definitely think this is a boat where we should be racing. We're probably going to be closer to the bottom of the grid for the first few races anyways, at least. Maybe the potential of her safety car kind of helps us out. I'm not too sure if we're going to get through into Q2. We'll see how we look. Five minutes to go here in the session, as we are just plummeting down the order. We are going to slap on another pair, try and ensure that we get into Q2. Showing that we should be able to find two tenths somewhere as we sit and wait for our first few cars to go out so that we can follow behind. All clear the garage, Maybe please. Car ready to leave. Down the first two straights. Someone comes way behind us there. Who was that? Someone came right up behind us. Looks like Antonio Giovinazzi. Coming behind us and going way wide. I don't know if he was on a hot lap or anything. If he was on a hot lap, that is terrible for him. So at the end of Q1, we are right on the cusp here as Schwarzman and I both clear into Q2, probably on two sets of softs. We're both going to have to wait until the end of Q2 to try and go out and set our lap times there. Decent, Decently down the order there. That definitely did not help Antonio Giovinazzi. I definitely think he was on a hot lap there trying to pass us on the outside. Need a good lap here or we're out of qualifying. As we move our way around the last sector of the course, Sarin's right up behind us the entire way of the lap. I thought the better of it, let him get in front of us. I don't want him pushing for us to try and actually race while we're in the middle of this qualifying section. I think we're going to try and push a little bit more as Sonoda is right behind us. Fantastic toad here. This is not good for us. You know, we threw ourselves wide on this last corner, trying to break a little bit earlier, get the car turned in, get around the corner, get the power down as early as we can. Come across a line, I think I saw a 127.6, which is definitely better than our first lap in Q1. I'm not sure if it's going to be good enough to get us anywhere into Q3. Hopefully
hopefully somewhere decent within the order. 13th, just in front of Yuki Sonoda. As we lose Fernando Alonso, Pierre Gasly, myself, Sonoda, Ocon, and Schwartzman. We found almost the second somehow on Schwartzman. I'm curious if something happened to him in his lap. With that being said, though, let's take ourselves to the grid for the start of the first race of the 2021 season. No more testing, no more practice. This is the real deal. And it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. There's no shortage of passing opportunities around the 3.36 miles of the Bahrain International Circuit, with the best at turn one, of course, and then another soon into turn four. 15 corners here, six to the left and nine to the right, and we could see one or two flat spots into the tight left-hander of turn 10. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. And they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Verstappen, Perez, Daniel Ricciardo, and Norris, Vettel, Leclerc, Sainz, and Lance Stroll, Fernando Alonso, Gasly, Jackson, and Sonoda, Ocon, Schwartzman, Kimi Raikkonen and Mick Schumacher, Russell, Latifi, Mazepin and Antonio Giovinazzi starts from the back of the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. All right, so race one, it looks like we're doing a split seven and seven strategy. So I don't think it's gonna matter too, too much if we go from the mediums to the softs or the softs to the medium. Usually with these, it gets a little bit tricky. We get a little bit less life out of the softs and we have to go for a longer stint on the mediums though. But I do not think that's gonna cause too many issues as we've really overfueled the car here. We gotta turn it down ever so slightly. The car, the cars don't consume as much fuel as they did in times past. And with the ability, or I guess the lack of ability to change from high fuel to medium fuel to low fuel, it's it, it helps. It's one less thing that we have to worry about for the cars themselves. Checking out the race director, I think everybody's going to be starting on the softs, it looks like here. No further ado, let's go to five red lights on the start of our 2021 season with Aiden Jackson. Fantastic getaway from us as we get a little squirmy on the back end. Trying to find some space here. As we shoot our way up through the middle. And someone's had contact behind us. I saw someone's wing come flying into our... Yuki's out. That's kind of Caution, kind of the virtual BSC. safety car has just been deployed due to a buildup of debris on the track. We've been informed that due to the increasing risks, they're moving from a virtual to a full safety car. So on our first lap of our first few corners of our first full season, we have a safety car that is brought out from a buildup of debris. Not just a straight up safety car, it was BSC to start, and it went straight into the safety car after they realized there was too much debris. Heading now to the end of lap three, we finally pick up the safety car is finally ending up coming in. Safety car is in this lap. Safety car in this lap. Let's make sure those tires, 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 tires are up to temperature and Just remember the there is no overtaking until the timing line. Stay in position until the green flags. Okay, clear. It's a good run down on Fernando Alonso. I think we're going to have to send one up the inside on him here. 
I think we definitely could have gone in and got Lando as well, but we think the better of trying to keep a nice tight line. If you take Alonzo on the okay, you're in the top ten. Try go a little slower through the first few corners here, try and warm the tires back up. Knowing full well that these cars behind us are definitely going to have more pace than we do. Fantastic run out of three to try and take John Stroller on the outside as he fights us back and almost pushes us off the track. We sail one around the outside to try and get the inside line coming in. We're going to have to go outside again into one of the hairpins. Gives us a room, tries to shove us off again. As Lance goes way wide there, tried my absolute best to give him all of the space in the world to try and keep on that outside line, because now Alonso gets a good run. The officials are deploying the safety car due to multiple Again. cars being stopped on track. Mind your Delta, a new strategy is available on the MFD. Because we didn't realize that our Delta was way too high. Confirmed. This is about the time for us to come in anyways. I think lap 7 was what we were projected at. at being lap 5 right now, lap 6 is probably our right time Drop for your us to speed. come in. Our delta is too low and we risk a penalty. Slow your pacing. Okay, the incident has been cleared. Let's get back up to racing speed. Another car is out. As Ocon gets hit or something, we'll try and find ourselves a replay. Gap to teammate behind is 4.3 seconds. Oh no. on track resulting in loose debris fortunately the marshals have managed to clear it up in time and there are no plans for a safety car right now there's been an incident on track but officials are the onto the middle of lap 11 now and we can see Sebastian Vettel gaining on us in our rear view mirrors he was stuck behind George Russell for a few laps as soon as he got DRS I think he just pulled right past him the Aston Martin kind of one of the better engines on the grid right now so might be a bust to try and contain him if we're going to try and salvage a point here. That'll come in down at us and with the RS this is going to be a tough ask for us to keep that ass apart at bay. I'm not sure if Science has a problem in front of us though because Norris overtook him and Norris was two seconds in front of us. And now we're almost getting into the grasp of Carlos Sainz here. It did, he did have a problem, he must have had contact with Norris. As Vettel now tries to make a charge against us, probably get us on the next straight here. He sends a huge dive on the inside. Not really a putting up much of a fight there as we still end up in 10th position with Sainz having to go pit once again. Didn't see too much of a point to try and cut Vettel off up into that turn two and three. It's a tough ask to try and go full out with the curbs this year.
our fuel hasn't gone down since we got it back up to three and a half. So yeah, fuel, fuel definitely not too much of a factor as it was in previous games. One less thing to think about. Your ERS management does need to be on point. Gap to car in front is 5.5 seconds. Max Verstappen takes the win. Valtteri Bottas with the fastest lap. We nurse the car around the final two corners. We're going to come home in our maiden voyage. P10. What a start for the season. A lot of luck okay, waiting. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. But yeah, that's, fa that's a fantastic start to our season to at least get a point. I'm not sure where... Schwartzman ends up here. I think he ends up around 13 or 14, which is still not too bad for him considering Smiling the faces on the pit wall after a superb win here at Sakir. And rightly so. What a brilliant effort from the whole team. Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today. What set them apart from the rest? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success was keeping calm and reacting to the situation quickly. We've seen teams in the past throw away wins because they were too hesitant, but here they were decisive and that's allowed them to take the advantage. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. So, let's review the driver's standings. Max Verstappen now leads the Drivers' Championship. Some amazing talent out on the track today. But Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? There's a few contenders, but George Russell definitely stood out, I think. A really solid drive from him today, and one I'm sure the fans enjoyed. It's time to check out the Constructors' standings. Red Bull take over as championship leaders. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time. Be sure to join us again as we continue to bring you the latest excitement in Formula One. So, Max Verstappen getting the win over Valtteri and Lewis here. We finished P10 to bring home one point. Our teammate Robert Schwartzman up a few positions into 13th. As we did end up losing three cars in Ocon, Giovinazzi and Tsunoda. Very unfortunate for those guys. We'll have to go back and quickly try and check out what happened to all three of those guys. I'm sure we'll put it inside the video somewhere else. Amazing performance out there. I'm sure you're pretty happy with that. You gained a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? I definitely think we got to go with some more, uh, some more on the chassis or on the actual aero here, because the car didn't too, didn't feel too too bad. You really looked in control of your car out there. Your team must be thrilled. As always, Claire, I'm a big team guy. Couldn't do this without him. It wasn't the cleanest race today, was it? And I don't understand why sometimes these get thrown in without some kind of a some kind of a different answer. I think that none of us want to be the person to back down and these things happen is probably the best answer that we can give. Great. Well, that's everything. So new inside of the My Team mode for f1 2021 is this ability to deal with personnel issues so every now and then we'll have this event that we have to go to whether it's some kind of a dispute or us choosing to make a decision for something inside of the team as team owners we have to make these tough decisions the personnel department has asked us to deal with this we have a couple of options here take your time what you decide to do will have consequences so we get to choose what we would like Schwartzman to work on. Do we want to have him work on his pace or his awareness? I think we're going to give him awareness to try. It seems like if we're going to be crashing a lot this year, we got to get him Thanks. not making mistakes. I know these kinds of decisions can be challenging, but I think he made the right call. So I think I think every, every time we get one, we're going to try and do our best to put the best option for the team, whether that's with a claim, this, that, and the other. But other than that, guys, that is going to be the end of episode one of our My Team career with young Aiden Jackson. Join us next time for the Spanish Grand Prix. Please like, comment, subscribe. Any amount of help making these videos does help me out significantly. Until next time, have a great day.